Hello and welcome to another economics video. Today I'm going to talk about the Federal Reserve and a couple weeks ago the Federal Reserve met and decided to raise the Fed funds rate and it is now uh, between three quarters of one percent and one percent and the Fed funds rate is considered a, a benchmark for interest rates throughout the economy although lately I've drawn a lot more towards personally the 10-year Treasury as opposed to the Fed funds rate. However, I want to focus kind of away from the current Fed funds rate and talk about some of the economic projections that the Federal Reserve makes. Uh, back in 2011 under Ben Bernanke, and this is something that I completely agree with them doing, the Fed members began to take surveys on how they saw the economy going forward. What I began to do was to take those surveys and enter them statistically into a model so that I could see over time what the Federal Reserve was seeing. And so I'm going to begin by looking at GDP and uh, you know some of the interesting questions that are being obviously being raised from uh, these projections. So back in early 2014, for example, the Fed saw 2016 GDP as 3.3 percent. We actually ended up under two and you could see that acknowledgement later on. But it's these kinds of trends that I'm looking for in the Fed to see, uh, you know, kind of along the lines of what they're thinking. Interestingly enough, in this latest meeting, we really didn't see too much. Now this is December 2016. This gray line here is March of 17. So in future videos you'll see this 16 get bumped out of the way and we'll focus more on 17. 2017 growth from the Fed's point of view uh, wasn't started as robustly as 2016. By the time fall of 14 got around it became clear that growth was going to be a little slower to come by in future years, especially as we got later in the business cycle. Interestingly enough, the Fed over the last two meetings has slightly bumped up its growth projections for 2017. The big indicator though here, and I want to note this, this is real growth. This is growth less inflation. The Fed, since the election, has not really boosted GDP uh, projections that they've done it by a tenth of a percent which is very little meanwhile in the stock market investors are obviously looking at this a lot differently they're expecting much more robust GDP growth in 2017 2018 has pretty much been the same they nudged it up a tenth of a point as well in the last meeting 2019 and long-run growth are two things I want to talk to people about uh, beginning Beginning a couple of meetings ago, the Fed actually issued below 2% readings for 2019. And interestingly enough, uh, the long run growth plan. So now the Federal Reserve, which has always kind of implied this longer run growth rate of 2%, now sees longer run growth at 1.8%. This could be one of two reasons. And, uh, I think Fed governors over time are going to talk about this. I think the near-term reason they're seeing this is because the Fed is beginning to accept the fact that they'll probably want uh, more inflation for a longer period of time as opposed to controlling inflation through higher interest rates, meaning that they're okay with inflation being over 2% as long as other economic factors are constant. Now with that inflation being a little bit higher, real growth is going to drop. That's one theory. And I'll share with you in a little bit why I think that that theory may also not be true. The other theory is that our demographics of growing retirees and uh, baby boomers who in this era are entering their 70s and will obviously in the longer run more of them will be in their 70s. That growing demographic and, and the social services and, and the welfare costs associated with it are going to put a little bit of a strain on growth in the long run as well. So one of two theories there, possibly both, being the reason for this interesting little drop. But I'm going to keep an eye on that to see if they either bring it back up to 2% or move it over. I want to talk next about inflation. And inflation is another projection the Fed has made, and it's been 
one of those boring uh, projections. I mean, they uh, for last year they they dropped it below two percent because obviously we were seeing some strong headwinds to growth. But for the most part, they've seen a two percent inflation across the board. This is PCE inflation and not CPI, which is measured a little bit differently. It's a little bit lower than CPI. But I want to make uh, an observation here based on what I just said a moment ago. If the Fed is willing to see higher inflation, and they've made statements to that effect, and that is actually affecting their real GDP growth, why is it not showing up here in their longer run PCE inflation uh, numbers? I would expect to see these numbers on the back end closer to 2.2% versus just a flat 2%. But what the Fed is essentially saying here is that we're going to be at or around 2% inflation for an extended timeline. So if this number goes to 2.2, 2.3%, the Fed in, in this chart, static chart, is saying that they will likely fight that with higher interest rates. So it's an interesting dichotomy uh, for the Federal Reserve. Now, I'm going to switch over to unemployment, and unemployment is something that the Fed uh, obviously started taking a stronger look at after the financial crisis because if you read Ben Bernanke's book, he said that uh, he felt that unemployment was just kind of, uh, the employment situation in the United States was obviously hampering the recovery. But what was interesting about the Fed's projections is that unemployment actually improved faster than the Federal Reserve had expected. And according to this, and according to their longer run numbers, their longer run numbers are, are what they believe, in my opinion, full employment to be. And, and now they're saying that essentially we're at full employment. But interestingly enough, a couple of years ago, three years ago, if you would have asked the Fed this, they would have given a long range unemployment rate of 5.5%, which is much higher than where we're at now. So the Fed sees uh, in 2017 an unemployment rate of 4.5%, which is slightly lower than where we're at now. Uh, they see that staying for 2018, 2019, and then their long run is actually slightly higher at 47 So the Fed may be kind of making the argument that we're doing a little bit better than full employment right now. Time will tell in terms of that, but I want to see what this chart looks like as economic conditions turn around and what I mean by turn around I should say turn downward the Fed has never been in a position where they're forecasting unemployment as a recession is occurring at least not publicly and so uh, I think we're going to continue to see the Fed's unemployment forecasts around four and a half percent for the foreseeable future but once again I do want to note that the Fed has not uh, suggested that the election of Donald Trump is going to have a significant impact on unemployment. Uh, and again, whether that's right or wrong, I'll, I'll leave up to, to time to decide. My final look, and I'm going to use two charts to take a look at this. This is the Fed funds forecast. So the Fed funds rate right now is between three quarters of a percent and one percent. And that's close to where we were at the end of, of 2016. The Fed originally, uh, two and a half years ago, had us at three and a half percent on a Fed funds rate for the year 2017. And we can obviously tell that that's not going to happen. What is interesting, though, is after bottoming, t uh, you know, six months ago at 1.1 percent, the Fed now is actually a little bit higher. So they have us at 1.4 percent at the end of this year, which essentially means that they anticipate raising rates two more times. Uh, whether that's in June, September, I, I don't know necessarily. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they do one uh, potentially in June and then hold off until either December or uh, the second to last meeting to see how conditions are. But basically the Fed is saying that they are going to uh, raise rates two more times in 2017 through this metric right here. If you look at 18, they're essentially saying that there will be three more rate hikes in 18, taking us over the 2% mark. And then in 19, there'll be three, possibly four, as the uh, the increase is 0.9%, which, uh, 
which interestingly enough gets us closer to that long run. So they're saying 3% in 2019, 3% in the long run. So the Fed believes that they can bring interest rates up to meet their long run obligation by 2019. Now, we'll see if that's the case. Interestingly enough, as, as you see these projections of rates, you see them tumble over time. For their 2019 projection, the Fed has actually increased their uh, rate expectations twice. So the Fed seems to be in a hiking mode, uh, but we'll, again, time will tell what we'll see in, in 2019 and, and whether or not the 2019 rates would actually surpass the longer run rates, we'll have to see. My final chart that I want to show people, and again, this is along the Fed funds forecast. This is exclusively the long run Fed funds forecast. And uh, I joke with people, it's, this starts back in 2012 where the Fed said our long run rate is going to be four and a quarter percent. It bottomed under three percent in September of 16 and now it sits at three percent. So it appears as if three percent is the long run rate for the Fed as of right now. If economic conditions were to deteriorate before we get to that three percent, you can expect to see that number go down. But this is an interesting number because the Fed is holding a lot of treasuries and a lot of mortgage-backed securities on its balance sheet. And many people wonder when that's going to be let go, when that's going to taper off. I believe that this long-run Fed funds rate may actually be a lead indicator to that. If this does not go up and the Fed funds rate reaches 3%, one way for the Fed to continue to tighten without increasing the Fed funds rate would be to sell some of those uh, bonds or securities. And, uh, you know, again, it's a, it's a controversial uh, topic, quantitative easing, and obviously the reverse end of it, which currently is called taper. I don't know what they would uh, call it totally on the back end if the Fed decided to sell these securities. Keep in mind, with tapering, they, they just slowed purchases. They didn't actually shrink the balance sheet. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how they handle this going down the road. And I like this uh, I like this chart because I've argued with people that the Fed has been in what I call a perpetual easing mode. And this chart would argue that, that they're just not going to see the 4 or 5% Fed funds rates that we saw in the past as a result of... Uh, frankly, the dovishness of the Federal Reserve. So I will continue to update these charts. I will continue to update people as the data comes in. In a future video, we'll look at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet and what it's comprised of. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.